So a mammogram is a low dose x-ray examination of the breast. When you check in for your first mammogram, you will be given a, um, a questionnaire to fill out, including your family history, any possible symptoms or concerns you have about your breast health, whether you've had breast cancer in the past, a number of questions that are considered important in terms of providing the best examination. And a typical um, screening mammogram includes two views of each breast so that we can image all of the breast tissue. All mammograms require breast compression. And um, although none of us women love the idea of compressing our breast tissue in a, in a machine, um, the compression only lasts for a few seconds for each um, image required. And it's really important, actually, because it spreads out the tissue and allows us to see through the tissue better. And if you have any finding on the mammogram, the compression helps us see the uh, margins of it better so that we can make a better evaluation about what to do with that finding. You can have what we sort of colloquially refer to as a 2D mammogram, and that's a full field digital mammogram. All, almost all mammograms in the United States are now digital, um, but tomosynthesis is sort of a new advance in breast imaging. and. Um, Colloquially, we'll call it a 3D mammogram. It's not truly a three-dimensional mammogram, but it, it obtains a number of images of the breast at different projections, and then it compiles a data set, and we're able to scroll through the tissue in a more complete way, and we are able to separate out better overlapping tissue that could be obscuring a lesion. And um, the medical trials looking at the value of tomosynthesis have been very exciting. It it increases cancer detection, particularly invasive cancer. And in fact, in our own um, evaluation of our own data, we found a significantly higher cancer detection rate for invasive breast cancer using tomosynthesis. And so that's very exciting since that's the goal of mammography is to find breast cancer early. And it also decreases recalls for just overlapping breast tissue, what we call a false positive recall meaning that when we evaluate it, it's a potential abnormality, but when we evaluate it further, it's just either a benign finding or, or not, not a real finding. And false positives we'd like to always try to reduce because they cause anxiety. It really depends on a woman's age, whether we start with breast ultrasound or we start with mammography. And that is related to the likelihood and the incidence of breast cancer dependent on your age group. So for our very young patients under 30, we will start with a breast ultrasound because the, um, the incidence of breast cancer is very low in that age group, and the, you know, the frequency of benign findings such as breast cysts are high. And so if we can do an ultrasound and definitively find a benign finding, then we never need to put the patient through a mammogram. Breast ultrasound is very useful in evaluating potential abnormalities in the breast. Um, it does not require any radiation. It uses sound waves to obtain images of um, findings within the breast tissue. We use ultrasound very commonly. We use it for evaluating findings that we might have picked up on a mammogram. And we also use it when women come in uh, feeling a lump or a focal area of pain. And it's very valuable.